Hello and welcome to our webinar about uh, the Associated Press Stylebook Online. Uh, we're welcoming today uh, college instructors who might already use Stylebook Online in your classroom, or maybe you've been considering making the switch from the book to Stylebook Online. Um, I'm Colleen Newvine. Joining me today is Chris Kohick. He's president of Stylebooks.com. I've been product manager of AP Stylebook for about 12 years. Chris came to the AP back in the 90s with the radical idea that maybe the venerable AP Stylebook needed to have a website. So between the two of us, we've got a couple of decades of experience and uh, I think you'd be hard pressed to stump us, but if it happens, we'll uh, find out the answers to your questions and we'll get back in touch with you. Um, who we are not um, is the, the editing team of the AP Stylebook. Um, the the Stylebook is written and edited by some of the most experienced journalists that AP has. Here we're giving them a shout out. Um, Paula Froke over on the far left is the lead editor of the AP Stylebook. So Chris and I to collectively handle the business, and the technology, the customer relations, the subscriptions, um, the printing for the AP Stylebook, but this is the, uh, the brilliant team that actually makes the decisions on the entries that are in the Stylebook. You can feel free to ask questions today about um, the Oxford comma, um, but we aren't the ones who make those decisions. I'll start out with just a brief background on what the AP Stylebook is. I'm assuming if you're joining us, you, you probably have at least a passing familiarity, but just by way of background, um, the Stylebook as we know it has been around since the 1950s. It started out as a tool for AP newsmen, and at that point they were predominantly men, um, so that if you were filing from a bureau anywhere around the country or anywhere around the world, um, the copy coming in and going out would be consistent. We have a distributed workforce um, covering news all around the globe, and we wanted to make sure that spelling, punctuation, grammar, explanations was consistent um, so, so that AP news um, that people were reading from all around the globe looked and sounded similar. Um, in addition, people are sometimes surprised to learn that the Associated Press is a not-for-profit cooperative and we're owned by daily newspapers um, throughout the United States. And part of the, the terms of the contract is that if you are a newspaper that's part of the cooperative, you're required by that contract to share with us news of spontaneous origin. That means if a big news story breaks and you are the closest newspaper to it, you're, you're required to share a story with the cooperative so that other newspapers um, that are part of the AP can also have that news. That means that in addition to AP providing news out to newspapers and radio stations and TV stations and websites, there's news coming in. And those news organizations began using the style book so that the content coming into us used the same spelling, punctuation, grammar as what we pushed out. Um, and also so that stories that they were running in their newspapers would use um, consistent styling so that a local story and an AP story sitting side by side um, would um, look consistent. So that's kind of the, the origin of how we became the dominant style book for, um, for the news industry. But we're here today to talk about uh, specifically AP style book online. So this is the digital equivalent of the, the spiral bound print style book that you might be more familiar with. If you haven't been on our website in a while, we totally redesigned the website and relaunched it last year. So it, it may look different than the last time you visited if it's been a while. 
a, a couple of the main things that we changed in that overhaul uh, are that it's much more mobile friendly. So if you're using your AP Stellbook online subscription on your phone or on your tablet, I think you'll find that um, it's faster and the responsive design just looks better um, on, on those devices. And we also did a lot of work on the search function. Uh, this is the, the number one thing that we heard from people, that the way that they interact with Stylebook Online is they have a question, something uh, is confusing them, or they need quick clarification. So we made that search box up at the top bigger, bolder, more prominent, and we also worked on the search function underneath that search box. So I'm going to hop out of my PowerPoint now and head on over to, um, to the live demonstration of Stylebook. This is what our logged in homepage looks like. So once I put in my, my username and password, this is the, the primary page that I'm going to come to. And I think of this as sort of the, you know, the, 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 the dashboard, the cockpit, the remote control that drives um, my use of AP Stylebook Online. Again, you'll see that search is really big and prominent up at the top, but then in each of these uh, content buckets as you scroll down, there's also a search. So the top item on this logged in homepage is my custom style book. Um, I can search within that box and just look for uh, entries that only appear in my custom style book. So if I want to be a little bit more um, surgical in only searching one piece of my style book content, I can do that. I could also just search AP style book. But by default, if I search up in that top search box, it's going to bring me back results that cover the full range of all the content that's in uh, AP Stylebook. That includes custom content, and I'll show you in a bit how you create uh, a note or an entry. That comes up up at the top because we assume that your custom content might be the most important to you. Then as you scroll down, you can see um, this is the AP Stylebook's content. The first thing we'll show in your results is anything where the term you entered matches the actual entry name. And then below that, as you scroll down, it's anything where that word appears in the definition of an entry. Um, over on the right, you'll see that uh, we also have matches in Webster's New World College Dictionary. That's an option to add the dictionary. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, and you also get matches for Ask the Editor and Topical Guides. I'll talk about those as well. So we try and make it easy for you fairly quickly to see all the different places that you've gotten a match not just in what you might think of as the digital version of that, that spiral bound style book. If we go back out to home, if you're used to being able to sort of um, page through the style book, if in your, um, in your instruction, maybe you tell your students study chapters A through E, or study the sports chapter, or study the business chapter. Here in the AP Stylebook section, you can see this click uh, to view by chapter, and you can do that same kind of uh, scrolling through that you would in, um, in the paper book. So this is the A chapter. I can scroll down and just sort of see what's in there. I can say, I'd like you to study um, M through P. So I can click on the M chapter, browse down through there. These are the A through Z chapters. In addition, we have the topical chapters. 
So if you'd like to have your students read the new polls and surveys chapter, those are available in the drop dropdown. Um, they can go to the food chapter, they can go to the punctuation guide, and in each case, scroll down, um, sort of mirroring that experience that you might have if you were leafing through the book. I'll go back out to my home page and show you how you can add uh, your own custom entry. So I just got done um, working on a, um, a AP Stylebook Twitter chat today where we talked about football. Um, so uh, this is something that's already in the Stylebook, but I'll give you an example. Um, you know, at the typical AP Stylebook rule is that um, numbers 10 and above, we use numerals and one through nine you spell out. Um, but here's an example. Um, if I want to create that, you can now see that um, this will be, uh, I can edit it, I can delete it. When I go back over to my custom style book entries, you can see the entry here. And when I go to do a search up at the top, you'll see that the very first thing that comes up is my custom entry up at the top. Um, but then in addition, um, it's mentioned in major co college basketball conferences And there it is. But if I if I wanted to make sure that um, when I search Big Ten with the numeral, it comes up, I can create my own note that way. I'll go back out to uh, homepage and um, show you uh, favorites. So these are entries that I might refer to frequently. And I want to make it easy to come back to what I sometimes refer to as um, AP style kryptonite. So no matter how many times you look it up, you can't remember whether underway is one word or two. Uh, you could do a search. You could have it come up and say, oh, that's right. It got updated in 2013 and now it's one word. I'm going to favorite that so that um, when I look it up again, later today or tomorrow, it's easier for me to remind myself that, yep, that's changed. So now you can see that underway is in my favorites. If I'd like to um, add another note or example to make it easy for me, um, I can say uh, not underway, they changed it. So I'm able to bold or make italics. I can uh, link out if I want to add an additional resource. I can add bullets. And all of that is part of the, the styling of that note. So now I've added a note. And if I search underway two words, um, you'll see that um, my note appears when I do that search. So we understand that while the, the AP Stylebook has grown over time, um, it's now more than 600 pages, it's still not going to cover everything that might be relevant for you and your students. So if you have local terms um, the name of your president, the name of your academic buildings, the name of your residence halls, you can add those in. Um, you can also add notes and examples. So if there's something that your students are having a hard time remembering, you could add in a note that's sort of your local example or the, the way that you've explained it in class to help clarify that. Um, I'm seeing that um, that there's a lot of background noise. I'm sorry about that. I think we've got just about everybody muted. Um, 
so uh, if, if that's me rattling, uh, I apologize. Um, we'll, we'll see what we can do to, to get that quieted down. Um, in addition, I'm going to go back out to the home page. Um, and in this AP Stylebook section, you can see that um, we have listed new entries and recent changes. This is one of the ways that, um, that AP Stylebook Online differs from the print book. Of course, we only do a print book once a year. Um, it comes out right after Memorial Day. And if something changes the day after we go to press, you'll have to wait until next year's book to see that change. Um, Stellbook Online, we can add entries and update entries throughout the year. So um, if I click on new entries, you can see what's most recently been added and you'll see that there are a lot of entries um, that, that came online May 30th when the new book came out. Recent changes, um, the most recent was that we updated our Among Between entry uh, August 3rd. The OPEC entry got edited on June 25th to reflect the changes in um, who the members are of OPEC. Our stock price entry was edited on June 22nd. So looking at the new entries and recent changes sections are two places that you can kind of go to help reinforce to your students that um, the AP style isn't carved in stone tablets. It's not a matter that once they learn it, once in your class, they're done. That AP style evolves with the way language Hello, Colleen. I think we may have lost your uh, uh, your audio connection. Um, and I, I think one of the things that's that's helpful is just conveying this idea to your students that um, that they'll they'll need to stay on top of it as it evolves over the years. Hi, Colleen. I think we're losing your audio connection. Uh, it seems uh, that we're having an issue there. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me. Uh, this is Chris Kohick. I work with stylebooks.com and I've worked with the AP Stylebook for some time. Uh, and I think at this point, I'll let Colleen continue with the online presentation from her, uh, from her display of the website. Uh, but the section that I was going to talk to everyone about with is how you can use the website and specifically site licenses uh, within your uh, teaching environments. Uh, we offer two uh, types of site licenses that we have. One is called a named user site license and the other is called a concurrent user site license. The named user site licenses essentially involve each individual user having a, uh, their own username and password. And then they can log in and create custom entries. They can add notes to AP Stylebook entries. So say for instance, your style guidelines uh, dictate that email is still used with a hyphen as opposed to one lowercase word. You can note that on AP Stylebook content. And then if that is a custom note, your individual users that are part of your site license can see that note right at the top. So if there are uh, disparities with AP style, that can be highlighted immediately for your, uh, for your school. These named users, again, uh, may allow users to log in and access the content. So if you are on your cell phone, if you are uh, away from campus, uh, you have access via that login. With the concurrent user site licenses, 
uh, they provide a way for larger institutions and journalism schools who may not want to necessarily manage, uh, you know, a hundred or more individual uh, accounts. They can actually have it set up where uh, they are accessing the site via a custom URL, and that custom URL is uh, only accessible from uh, the IP range that you provide us for access. So we have a number of schools where the university library will have a site license and they will provide us either the IP range for the, uh, just for the library or for the entire campus. And with those concurrent user site licenses, uh, you can then access via a proxy server. So if somebody is accessing through a VPN from off campus, they can get in that way as well. And then just additionally, uh, with the concurrent user licenses, we also understand that some people are out in the field or, or are not accessible to a VPN or that sort of thing. And the account manager for the site license can then assign individual logins to those users who are remote. And consequently, then they can have access even though they're not within the, uh, you know, the confines of the universities network. So those offer some of the, the possibilities that we have in terms of working with uh, journalism schools specifically, dependent upon your size and your needs, uh, as well as with collegiate newspapers and, uh, and other uh, organizations such as that. Uh, Colleen, are you back? I, I hope so. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great. Um, it, technology is our friend, except when it's not. So th thanks for jumping in. Um, two, two things to note just in terms of how the licenses work. So first of all, um, I hope you're aware that uh, AP Stylebook offers you the option to um, get a desk copy of the print book every year if you require a style book for your classroom. You also have the option if you prefer to get a style book online subscription instead of the print. So um, if what you're seeing here looks like it would be useful, this truly is just a, a demonstration. It's not a, a QVC commercial. Um, we'd love for you to use Stylebook Online um, it, as an alternative um, that we think is more robust than getting the, the print book. Um, but if you decide that you'd like to, um, to use it for your students, um, whether as a named user license or a concurrent user license, um, one of the things that we've heard um, some professors and departments are doing is buying the license and then charging out a share of it as a lab fee to students. So, you know, we're not going to expect that you're going to spend a couple hundred dollars out of pocket um, and just gift that to your students. Um, but one of the nice things about doing it that way is that depending on the number of users that you have in a site license, the cost per user goes down. So if your whole department ends up buying Stylebook online and you divide it out um, uh, as a lab fee for your students, it could end up being a much cheaper alternative for your students than going to the bookstore and buying the print book. Um, so just wanted to offer that out in case you're looking at this and saying, well, that's all well and good, but how, how on earth would I do that. Um, we've, we've seen some, um, some classrooms um, where that, that has seemed to work for them. Uh, I'll go back and show um, a, a few additional features now that you can hear me again. Um, one that I think is um, helpful is topical guides. Now this is um, moving into the content that's in addition to what's in the print book. Um, so this is a, an online only bonus feature. Topical guides are roundups of content that relate to um, events happening in the news. 
they include entries that are already in the style book and we sort of pull them all into one place to make it convenient. Um, in addition to um, facts and figures that might be useful if you're covering that news event. So for example, if we go into this topical guide that we did about um, the royal wedding, you'll see that, for example, we have the, the style book entry that tells you that royal wedding is always lowercase. And we have our entry for Buckingham Palace and Windsor Castle. But then we scroll down and also tell you who some of the key figures are in the royal family. And continuing on down, we'll also tell you um, that Prince William was best man, um, that uh, Meghan Markle decided not to have a maid of honor. Um, if you wanted to know, um, what flowers um, were used at the wedding or that it was a lemon elderflower cake that they served as the wedding cake. Um, sort of all of those um, uh, tidbits and details are rounded up uh, into this topical guide. The most recent topical guide is available for everyone, but uh, this listing of the entire archive is only available to subscribers. Another feature that's an online only bonus is the pronunciation guide. So words and phrases that are in the news that, um, that you might need a little help pronouncing, we include both the phonetic spelling and if you click through, um, you can hear um, an MP3 file uh, that's done by our friends in the broadcast department at AP um, so that if you're doing a, a radio or TV show or since most journalists now have to be um, multi-platform if you're doing a video um, for your website or you're doing a podcast uh, you can make sure that you're pronouncing those correctly. Probably the most popular feature of Stylebook Online is Ask the Editor. So um, there are more entries in Ask the Editor than there are in the book itself. So this is an extensive archive where subscribers have come and asked questions, either something that's supplementing content that's already in the book, or um, it's something where you'd like a little additional guidance um, your usage, maybe it's unclear how to apply the rule that you're seeing in AP style. So um, this is the last week's worth of questions that we've answered. And in addition, there's an FAQ that's the most popular questions. Um, this would be a great place for you to point students sort of the the, the questions and topics that trip people up the most, um, this would be a great study guide. Um, another way that you might use Ask the Editor is if your students asked you a question that stumped you, you just weren't quite sure how to apply um, a style rule or you weren't sure what the correct answer was, you could go over to the submission page and you could uh, either on your own after class, um, you could uh, on the sly submit your question and then the next time your class meets you could sound very authoritative saying that you'd um, come up with an answer or you could submit it together um, as a class and then see um, what that answer is that comes back. Um, uh, again, you know, uh, you can use this for um, your own sort of desk copy or you could use it um, for your entire class. So if you, um, if you added an entry or a note as I showed you earlier to your own individual um, instance, then that would just be a place for you to refer back to. So if something comes up in class, um, you could show it on your projector um, show your example. Um, if you're using a site license, as Chris explained, um, and you entered that entry or that note, 
um, on your site license all of your students who you uh, had accessing your site license would be able to see those notes and entries and they'd all be searchable. Um, it, we're just about at 30 minutes. So is there, uh, is there anyone who has a question? Anything I didn't cover or anything I confused you on? Anything where my audio cut out and I thought I was explaining something but you didn't hear me? You can go ahead and uh, type it in on the chat. Okay, I don't see any questions. So I'm going to pop back over to the PowerPoint and just show you a few things that I think um, might be helpful to you. So um, we'll send you out a follow up email with all of these links, but I just wanted to make sure that you knew um, we have um, a page that gives a variety of information about co for college professors, including what's new in the book and how to order your desk copy. Um, we have a form where you can make your request um, and you can ask either for uh, a print copy or for Stellbook Online, whichever is your preference. We also have this link, apstellbook.com slash suggestions, where if something comes up in your class and you think that there's an entry we don't have or an entry that we should update, you can submit that suggestion to us there. And we have uh, this extensive help center at apstellbook.com slash help. Um, this covers a lot of the most commonly asked questions, but if something comes up um, that isn't covered, you'll also see in that help section that you can submit a question to us by email uh, or you can call us on our toll free number. Um, we got a question about online quizzes. We do have a subscription based AP style quiz product. Um, it's not really ideal for classroom use. I'll tell you why. Um, the questions are not randomized. So if one of your students uh, subscribes, um, they're going to be able to see the questions in order and uh, see the answers as well. It's a great study guide um, and it's only um, about $7. Um, so if you want your students to use those quizzes to sort of bone up on what they, they might need to study more, um, it, it's a great supplement to Stellbook Online. Um, we also uh, don't have the ability for you to see how your students have done. So they're, um, they're autonomous individual subscriptions versus a site license where you'd see that your students have taken you know the first five quizzes and you'd see their grade we are looking at making that improvement though so if you have thoughts about how style quizzes would be useful to you um, i'd love for you to drop me an email and let me know how we could make those um, a helpful classroom tool um, it, it's something we get questions about fairly regularly. So um, your, your suggestions um, would be really useful for us in, in potentially evolving that product. Um, if there aren't any additional questions, um, I'll go ahead and sign off. Um, so going once, going twice, Okay, thanks so much for joining me today. Um, thanks to Chris for explaining how the site licenses work and for jumping in when my audio broke out. Um, you've got our contact information here. So if you think of anything that we didn't cover, um, please shoot us an email. We're happy to be of help. Thanks everyone.